My next guest tonight is a Grammy Award winning rapper and activist. He now hosts a new series on Netflix called Trigger Warning. Please welcome Killer Mike. Good to see you again. Hey, how are you? How you been? Let me make sure my wife says, don't look fat, straighten out your shirt. You look good. <laughs> you, you look big. You just look big. I you am look a big formidable. Guy. Yeah. Like. Hey, how y'all doing? Love y'all too. Now we've talked we've talked a bunch o o yeah. over the years. We've fifth, had a lot fifth of fun appearance. with you guys. Fifth appearance, okay. Yeah. We've also done some songs together. It's we been have. a lot of fun. So we've done the You're gonna be on RTJ4 out here. Yeah. I don't know what that third means. Third MC, we're adding a guy to the group. You're gonna be the third member. Boom. Squad. Now. <laughs> so, a successful rapper, Grammy winner. Now you're on Netflix with yeah. a show called Trigger Warning. Yep. What kind of show is this? Binge? Is this bingeable? I, is this kind of chill with this? What is going? To, if I think still it's do that? bingeable. I don't know. My, my wife had a bunch of our friends and a bunch of teenagers over, watching it. They seemed to like it. And then we sent the teenagers away and smoked marijuana and watched it again. <laughs> <laughs> did, did it improve it the second time with a little weed? It was actually, you know, I, you know, with the teenagers, it was a little funnier. With the adults on marijuana, everyone went to sleep, but we woke up laughing. <laughs> sure. So what, what, what is the show about? What, what the, am I going to see? The show is the most absurd thoughts and arguments I've had in my life, and to see if they're possible. So, oh, if, yeah. you know, I'm a black kid that grew up in Atlanta, um, and in Atlanta, it, everything is possible for black kids, right? So I never really had a box to keep me in my imagination. Why, why would that be? Explain that. Be, to I me. mean, because Atlanta's Wakanda for real. <laughs> Skyscrapers yeah, and black yeah. people everywhere. Sky, black people everywhere, and we're nice to white people, so it's a great place to go. Atlanta is the black Nashville. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I dig it. But um, we said we instead of country music and cowboy boots, we got Nikes and Future. So, <laughs> I um. But I, I, I had questions like, as a kid, I loved the bad guy. I loved the villain. As Americans, we seem to love the villains, right? So I wondered why don't we celebrate within my community, black community, why don't we celebrate our villains a little more, you know? And I looked at kids who are marginalized, join street gangs and stuff like that, and I knew from experience with having friends, wherever you interject money and jobs, gang violence dissipates. And I've always said, what if we could introduce a product, much like the Hells Angels, much like other motorcycle clubs or gangs, what if we could trademark, license this, and what if these guys had a product to sell that was legal and that would actually benefit their rivalry? So what I did was I took a, some Crips from Atlanta and also some Bloods, and they got together and they created a soda company. Is that what this is? That is Crippa Cola. Crippa Cola? That, that, and that is... Atlanta's these, the, What's the flavor? What's the flavor of the crisp? The, 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 the flavor is a traditional cola flavor. I, I can't cola say flavor. it's as good as the other soft drink that's made in Atlanta in terms of if that's what you what like. What am I going to open but this on? I need to, it's a damn good soda, though. What am I going to open this damn thing on? Hold on. I could open it for you with a cigarette no, no, lighter just, if you I'll got just, it. What do I got? Do I got it? You got it? Oh, gangster. G code. Bam. <laughs> Ooh, that's tasty. You do like it? Yeah, it's And very you nice. did not just join the Crip, so nobody's gonna kill you for drinking it. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, wh what other things do you do I'll on drink with you. We're homies. Oh, sh uh, sure. Uh, uh, you wanna just take a sip, swig off of I'll that? I'll take it straight out. Let's there go. We're gonna G-Code. Thanks much. Mm -hmm. We're drinking this room uh -oh, temperature uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. Like, like, like English beer. Yeah. We're... <laughs> now, I understand you also start your own religion in this series. I do. I do. I start my own religion. Now, my, my, I have a theory. Um, as, a, as, a, as a moral guiding light, Jesus, the character in the Bible, is amazing. He's a superhero, right? He fights injustice with the church. He rallies against government. Him and his homies go around just effing it up for the system, right? <laughs> It'd be a great graphic novel. The only problem is it's, we, don't, we don't get our black Spider-Man. You know what I mean? So... And Why? Like, because in Western society, he's Jesus a white depicted guy. as white. Yeah, and okay, he's really yeah, yeah, skinny yeah. and his hair is long. He looks like, like a member of the Doors. So, <laughs> I, I... I always thought the Doobie Brothers. Yeah, yeah exactly. The Doobie Brothers, sure, it, yeah. He's the Almond Brothers. Greg he's probably Almond, a little smoked exactly. coke or done yeah. weed or something. Yeah, yeah. But for, with me... Well, I said that wrong. Smoked weed or done coke. But for, for me, I think that to raise a confident child in terms of divinity and matters of spiritualness, they need to see people who look like them or they need to see a deity that looks like them. So I went 
out into the world saying that we needed to destroy the image of white Jesus, and I begged a mega pastor, Creflo Dollar, to become a messiah of a new religion that I was going to start. <laughs> and to, and to, let's go to Joel Osteen's church and let's march in and rally like the Black Panthers and tell black people we're leaving white Jesus, and this is our new black messiah. And he looked me sternly in my eyes and said, Negro, you're crazy. <laughs> But so you had to start your own. I did. I started my own religion with my best friend who um, I met shooting dice at seven with in church. Um, Sleepy and I were in the basement of church shooting pool and dice. And he's one of the most morally good people I've ever met, even though we used to steal cars together. He, <laughs> he's... <laughs> No, but you know, so you were raised in the church when you started your yeah. own church. Is this a Christian church or is this a Killer Mike church? Like My church is the church of sleep. It's the church of sleepy. So right. you don't have to get up on Sunday to go? You don't have, no, man, you can, listen, you can enjoy God from your bed. You, you, you don't have to pay tithes because we don't have an official church, but we do have church in the strip club, so if you want to tip the girls, that's fine. Um, <laughs> but it, but we, we came up, I talked to Ariana Huffy, well, you know, hey, Jesus was naked under the robe. And you, aren't we, you, aren't we all, aren't we aren't all, we all, aren't we all, <laughs> did you take anything from your Christian upbringing I, to put in your church? Absolutely. I did. I, I took, I took a lot of sound, um, moral lessons from Christianity to love above hate, right? To allow people to space, to confess themselves and to give, give that pain away to the world and not have to accept and hold it in. And I took the forgiveness, spirit of, uh, forgiveness and fellowship. There is a lot in all spiritual systems and religions that we can use. The scary part, though, is when we colonize or intrude on others with our religion. Right now in North Africa, there's a tribe that's a nomadic tribe. For thousands of years, they've walked around. With the introduction of Christianity to their world, what we introduced was something that took God away from nature and people and around them and says you have to limit it to a book. And if you don't come to our church, that's not right. Well, that's hurting that tribe because along with Christianity being introduced, also land ownership is introduced. Now, the land to them used to belong to everyone. But with the introduction of church and politics, that's stopping. So we just have to make sure that when we're introducing morally what's right to us from Western society into other places and other people, that we introduce it with a fair hand, we introduce it from a moral perspective, we introduce it with love and care, and not just with sugar and candy and war. You know? And 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 Cripple And Cripple Cola. <laughs> And, good to see you. Uh, man, thank good you to see for you. having me. Trigger Warning is on Netflix tomorrow. Killer Mike.